throughout this presentation, I'm going to try to push some hot buttons to make certain that you guys realize that you acquiescing to this rate setting methodology and not pushing back is reinforcing the state's um, mindset of we're just getting more efficient. We're rocking. This smokes. I like this. Let's keep doing it. You know, they turn the rack. One more turn. God, if three turns was good, let's go four. Right? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get a little passionate and worked up about this. I'll, I'll take a step back and try to be a bit more. Okay. So, we've got a raw base data set. We know they have flaws associated with them. We try our best as actuaries to what you'll hear called normalize, adjust them. Ask the actuary, tell me what you do to normalize the data set. Tell me what adjustments that you do. The next step, the adjusted base data set, here's after all of these adjustments, what the data is going to look like. And you don't do every one of these adjustments every time. But you do a lot of them. And you always need to look to see if you need to do all of these. So programmatic changes. So think about what happens when you're doing a rate development process. Has anybody been to the hospital in the last year? No one in this room has been to the hospital in the last year. OK, I do this. Have you? OK, I was going to. I do this speech a fairly um, regular. Uh, you know, on an annual basis, I've never had somebody say it. So perfect. Thank you for saving me. <laughs> Um, so, uh, just tell me what month you went into the hospital. It was October. Okay, when did you get the bill? When did you see some bills associated with that? Um, they, they were staggered. Okay. You know, like I saw the last one last month. Yeah. So, the bill may take anywhere from 45 to 180 days to make it its way through the system. Okay. So completion factors, incurred but not reported claims. I'm going to explain what an IDNR is, that incredibly intuitive rolls off your tongue, IDNR, right? An IDNR is meant to adjust for the timing lag from when a claim is incurred and when it's actually paid, OK? Because if you think about what happens is we're going to use base data to set our rates from a base time period. And we're going to project it forward to, forward to a contractual time period, right? Well, if we use this time period and the world is completely changed upside down in the intervening years, is this time period a good proxy for the risk in the future? So not only do I have to adjust for data that I didn't have, I also have to adjust for programmatic changes, things that have happened in the interim that are not indicative of what's going to happen in the future. So when Wisconsin was just like every other state that had budget problems, did Wisconsin reduce reimbursement to providers? I'm assuming it did, right? So if I have data that says the unit price of a particular visit was $100 in my base data, but now it's cut to 75, if I'm projecting that forward, I'm going to project too much money into the future. Same issue if I don't have enough, if they've increased rates. As we look at how populations have changed over time, the downfall in the economy actually brought healthier individuals into Medicaid programs. Did you realize that? You had a higher demographic population from a health status perspective come into the Medicaid program from 2008 until about 2012. Because you had people that previously were privately insured and had a higher health status, had their income drop. And so better risk individuals came into the program. Those are the kinds of things that you need to adjust for. There's no such thing as a perfect data set that you don't have to adjust for, you don't have to normalize, okay?